In Lidding, you know that you can shift it and how do you shift it? And more importantly, how do you um, operate with that knowingness? This is the deep dive with Adam Roa. But effective communication is the number one way. It's the number one way because you start to, to, one, by communicating it, you've already acknowledged that there's a part of you that is worthy of being expressed. Your attachment needs are worthy of being expressed. You are now no longer keeping them hidden in the closet, afraid of what the other person might think. That's a huge step in the self-love chain. Two, what you are doing is giving your partner an opportunity to love you better, to, to match you better, to understand what your needs are and give them the opportunity to meet you in those needs. And then three, what you're also doing is you are uh, learning that it's safe. You're learning that it's actually safe to communicate that and hold yourself in, um, again, a, a space of self-love and worthiness where you are willing to stand for what you need. You are saying, I need this. Can you meet me here? And you'll start to see that the safer you feel in having your needs met and expressing them, that you're no longer going to need the anxious or the avoidant attachment styles to protect yourself. When you start to communicate and say, this is, this is what I feel, then you get it. You start to develop this understanding that through communication, you're not made to be the bad guy. You're not made to be wrong, but instead you are now seeing a reality around you in which your fears are being alleviated through love, through the invitation for your partner to love you in a way that fits you. And so through that repetitively and through working on it, you can start to shift your attachment styles into more of a secure. I know for myself, I uh, believe myself to definitely have been disorganized, which is um, a fear of, for me specifically, it was this fear of intimacy, incredibly scared of getting too close and too intimate. And yet at the same time, so anxiously holding on so I would push, push people away, push people away when they got too close to me. And yet the moment that they went too far, I would reach out and try and grab on and try and hold on. And I was doing this push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, very, like a lot <laughs> throughout all my early childhood. And that came from in, in what I've discovered to be like my father who incredibly distant, incredibly distant, feeling like my needs weren't met in that space. But my mother who threw her own just like, Anxious attachment style was always there, always wanting to be a part of it. And then you add in the sexual abuse, you add being cheated on, like all of these things. And it created quite a disorganized attachment style for myself. And um, I recently, in preparation for this podcast even, I went in and retook my attachment style quiz. And the quiz that I took said I have a secure attachment style. <laughs> I thought that was amazing. I was like celebrating because I know that wasn't how it was before. But how did that happen? That happened because um, of my ability to communicate and my ability to do other things. Like, so someone, if you're in an anxious attachment style, for example, when you're holding on and saying this person is the perfect partner, one of the things that you get to do is start to realize that there are other amazing partners for you. Like, that's a thing that you can do. And that's not saying that you need to devalue the person you're with, but understanding that this person isn't your only chance at happiness. Say that if, if this relationship ends, I'll find someone else. My heart might break for a while, but like I'll find someone else. Like that sort of thinking is something that's helpful for someone who has anxious attachment. Someone who has avoidant attachment, something that's incredibly important is to focus on the positives of your partner. To consistently look at all of the good qualities of your relationship. So that as it, get, it can continue to get better and you don't have to push it away. So there's all these little nuances and ways of being when you understand your attachment style that you can apply to your life, which will continue to move you in the direction of a secure attachment style. And when you start to communicate your needs effectively and they start to get met because you have found the partner who can match you and has a healthy relationship dynamic you're going to see your entire relationship landscape change. How you are feeling loved in your life will change dramatically. And you can start to live the life that you know deep down you deserve.